Yeah. Obviously, Nick needs no introduction. Um, you know, growing up in England as a young guy, you know, we used to idolise Nick Fowler. I always wanted to be Nick Fowler. I copied how he walked. I copied everything about uh, what he did, apart from uh, the ability to get ball round the golf course. Um, but a, a, a massive honour, obviously, to have him with us. Um, I think uh, you're going to learn some amazing things. You know, remember, he's, he's a six-time major winner. He's won 41 times around the world. He was number one for 97 weeks. You know, he was a dominant force of his era. Um, and, you know, a real privilege to have him. So give him a round of applause and let's uh, get the show on the road. Sure, thanks. Right, well, we were just talking with Jonathan about... Um, we have this thing, track man, as you know, it's, but it's a very expensive toy. If you've got one, you're very fortunate. But I, I teach myself with ball flights and, um, you know, fades and draws, highs and lows, simple as that. And so I'm going to run through a few things. Please ask me any question, kind of keep the question to what I'm kind of doing at that particular time. That will, that will help us move along. Um, so I want to try and give you some of, my, some of my absolute musts. You're obviously all very talented golfers, but you're at the real important stage of your life where you've, if you want to need to make changes, um, you, know, you can't survive just on talent with this game anymore. You need to understand your fundamentals. That's really important. You know, I walk the range with my CBS hat on, you know, and I talk to the world's best golfers. And I would say to them, you know, I've got a four hour show to fill. Uh, what are you working on? And I said, well, you know, I've just, just changed my grip just a fraction. And I said, well, that's great. That feels one second. And then I go to, then I go to Adam Scott. What are you working Well, you know, my alignment was just a little bit out. And great. And then I go to somebody else. My posture's a little bit out. And so you can see what they're sticking to, the fundamentals. Even the best players in the world are still grinding on their fundamentals. So they will, they will be in your mind all your life, all your playing career. So work on them and fine-tune them. Sure you can play the game of golf with a, a different a different grip. Once you say it's bad, there's very famous golfers have played with either very strong grips and, and worked on a swing, but sure they're pretty talented. It's quite rare. You know, I'm talking of the Lee Trevinos of the world or the Jim Furyk's of the world. Yes, they can do that. If you can do that and, and play and play great on a Sunday and win, fine, that's you. But if it's causing you poor shots under pressure, then you've got to think about changing some things. So I'm going to rattle on about some of the things that I've been working on now because I want to make the game as simple as possible. It really is. We, we've probably gone through an era where, boy, every, every coach is trying to outdo each other and coming up with something new and what have you. But the real basics still stack up to get this thing to move and get more, more important to get you to move and how to turn. So one of the things you've got to look at is... Your body turn, your, your body swings your arms, okay? Your arms do not swing your body. So the very important is to learn a really good sequence in how you move your weight over, yeah? And that is really as simple as um, learning to put your weight, I call it 90, put 90% 90 of your weight onto your right foot, yeah? So you learn to get over, so by simply moving your right but backwards, your right pocket behind you, your weight has to go. So if you, if you stay here, I've still got my weight on my left foot, I can't pick it off the ground, can I? So you want to get over. I assume we all believe in that. That's why the pitcher on the mound, that's why he winds up like so, doesn't he? That mound throws that thing at 100 miles an hour, he winds up and releases it. That's how we, that's how we throw a stone, or we skim. If we were to go skimming by the pond, we come back here, we plant it, and we throw. That is your perfect golfing action. There's your backswing, there's impact, there's your release. We can hopefully all do that. If you get lost and you need to do something like that to give you a picture of how to move weight, do it. You know, you've got to learn to get that sensation. So in the golfing terms, I used to do a lot of these drills. Jack Nicklaus used to do this every morning, warming up, simply putting his weight over to his right foot, so he's literally 90%, and you crank your left hip over, your left pocket over, there's your big backswing, you've seen great backswings from Sam Snead and Tom Watts and all sorts of people like that, and then you plant it down, there's your weight transference to start down, and then you fire through. Now that's a pretty good motion, isn't it? I mean, that's your, that's your golf, 
That's your body motion of a golf swing. If you can stand up and get your weight over, put it back down and fire it through and face your target, you're really rocking it. So then, did I wake you up? <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I'm, I'm yawning as well. So, next important thing, if you can do that really well, if you really believe in that, then you want your arms to connect with your body, to go in sync with you. If you simply don't move your arms, just lock them in and do that, I'd like you to think that's a pretty good takeaway position, isn't it? That's what we're all trying to get to. Everything's moved away in one unit. Club is in the right place. Yes, agree. So that's all we're looking for. Then we keep cranking. We keep turning and get our left shoulder under our chin. That's very important, yeah? And as I said, then we start down from the ground up. A simple thing you can imagine. Imagine you've got a bug, a bumblebee under you. Any chance he could uh, be delightful if he was... Imagine you've got a bumblebee, a bug under your left heel and you squash the bug. That will fire from the ground up, that reaction to start pulling and clearing through, yeah? So, let's put it together. So here's my backswing, here's a takeaway. I've just got a 9-iron to start. And if I went in one unit, like so, so it's move my weight, move my weight. I've actually got a little golf shot. Yeah, agree. I haven't done anything more than be really connected. So wherever my body goes, my arms will go. I move my weight 90 and I'm through 90 the other way. Now, I was taught by my coach, <laughs> he said golf's a giant chip shot. Well, there's a pretty good, that's a big chip, chip shot, isn't it? That chip shot is going 100 yards. So all I've then got to do is keep, A, keep turning, of course, and then understand a little bit about the plane of the swing. That's really important because, you know, if your shaft angle is in different positions, you're just, you're just fighting, we call it in Britain, centrifugal force. You should call it centrifugal here centrifugal force so you've seen plenty of players get the club in funny positions but the, we can now measure those forces that the club wants to go somewhere and sure you've got the strength but you're just making life a little bit more difficult so understanding the plane a cool way of finding your plane of your swing is i was, well, I was thinking about i was thinking about the grip the other day Really important you look at this club face. Again, this fella talks about how important the club face is. So get your club face square, get your grip in the right place. And your left hand is like your hammer. If you can just pick it up and put it down, that's how your left wrist works in your swing. Very much up and down. So it works up here, doesn't it? It collects the ball and it's up here. So you're, you're hinging this way with you. So why not start with that thing? And that helps you find how to grip it, yeah? Where your strength comes from. And if you're too weak, ouch, that hurts. And if I'm too strong, whoops, it doesn't want to come straight up. So find where you're going to grip it. Club face is square. And it's like a hammer. There you go. Right hand's got to do different. Right hand is working this way through the ball, either hanging on to the angle or it's releasing. So your right wrist works a different way. So think about that. They don't work the same. This fella's going here and around. This fella's doing the up and downs. So that's quite a cool way of... So you get a really good grip. You crank it up. That's how you're gonna set your wrist at the top of your swing. They're cranked at 90%. Now I just lock it in, move my weight, bang. There's the plane of my swing. Simple as that. I want to get the club because I haven't fought it. I haven't done over rotated. I haven't sucked it back. I set the wrist. These are the positions I want to find. This is kind of like a nice little simple double check for you. So think about that. So that's where I want to get to. I was a great setter of, we call it setting of the club. Used to like to crank my wrist as much as I could. And then I used to really set at the top, hang on to the angle as much as I could. And that's how I would hit my fades. So back to where we were, good connection. Belly does the work to get it back. Belly set, fire. Okay, now we're starting to look like a, a golf swing, yeah? Simple, well, there's a lot going on, but if you can 
simplify it, as I said, if you get really good body turn, because I remember reading, Jack Nicholas said, oh, I play with my hands and arms. And you think, wow, so Jack described his game swinging with his hands and arms. Of course, as a youngster, you go out, well, that's hands and arms. I do that, okay? Not a bad shot. Some of you would take that, wouldn't you? But what, the reason why he could say he was swinging his hands and his arms, because his body was working so well. You know, Jack had a very famous leg action, big turn, wasn't it? Planted it down. So because this was working great, he puts his attention on other parts of your body. So that's why it's really important. I was the same. I did, I did those drills of swinging my weight over so much that I could concentrate on different parts of my body to create different shots. So I didn't have to think of the whole sequence I'm describing to you. So, a couple more. So, connected, belly, belly set, and back and through, yeah? Any questions, kids? Well, I have a quick sip. Any questions? You can all do that? You all believe in that? You all agree 100% what I'm saying? move to the top of the class well that's there that, that's it then if you're not going to dispute me we've, we're done <laughs> so the next important part of all of that is as i said that the swing will get progressively longer you start hitting the full shot and you find your own sequence so let's try and wind it up even up. but i'm not trying to hit a nine iron flat out i want nice bit of control and I'd like to hit it clean so belly turn for me right now I'm thinking I love to get my belly to move because as I described you there's my connection to get it moving must keep this right knee really important you watch you watch the golfers on TV and you watch their right knee if they're swinging great they load onto their right knee like so they unwind and if they're swinging badly this right knee goes either forward or backwards and it changes the angle of attack quite considerably. So belly, set, turn, unwind. So some of you, some of you, um, hands up who visualizes seeing the golf ball fly. Okay, great, 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 that's about, about Hands up who feels their golf swing. You feel it, you feel a position. Yeah, less. Uh, hands up who auditory, you talk, you give yourself verbal commands like set, turn. What's happening this like? You're not you're not you're not alive? Huh? We are jellyfish. Yeah. So are you guys, that, are you the group that believes that you think of nothing in a golf swing? No. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking when you're swinging? Uh, hit it hard. Hit it solid. <laughs> that was solid. <laughs> he didn't like that. He gave me a wicked look. Gee, I'm not doing that again. Hit it solid, so, but how do you hit it solid? By making good contact. But yeah, to make good contact, like I said, we have to have the face in the right place. I can make, I can make really good contact. Watch this. Re that, was, that was good contact, wasn't it? Yeah, but... All right, let's move to a, another... I'll move up to six sign. While we're talking, so you get you get the gist. It's not, I like my swing to feel body onto a plane, keep turning. I unwind in the sequence. You all, your instructors are teaching you. So the golf swing works from the ground up. Yeah, that's when we get our force. And if you watch now, there was a great little piece the other day on Twitter of um, Frances Francesco Molinari doing his drill where he goes down and uses the ground force and he actually gets airborne as he hits it to get you know we never we didn't know that back in my era so that's all that's all new stuff to generate more power but it's 
what we were always taught, you know, the force we, we, we use, the ground force, which is like what I'm trying to describe, for getting your weight over, then you turn, then you back to thinking of the ground, and as you push down, this left knee will move, the left hip will move. But as you get, if you start doing that really well, you can then put your attention on different parts of the body. And I think it's a really fun way to find out who you are, because if you've got a good leg action already, you don't have to send more thoughts to, to, your good, to your leg action. You can put your thoughts, your attention in different parts of your body. That's what I did. I knew my leg action was good, so I could forget about it. So I used to put attention on different parts. So I'll do the same swing like I did before. Am I going to run out of ground? Whatever, I don't know. Belly, set, turn, bug and impact. Okay. So I used to do verbal commands. I used to talk to myself through the swing. People said you couldn't do that. You meant to have think of nothing. We've all read that before, haven't we? Psychologists would say think of nothing. And I disproved that, and many have. So belly, set, turn, bug and throw, bomb. So we start doing that. And then, so I started experimenting a couple of years ago, just for, just for fun. So if I put all my attention on my left hip, and I move my left hip as fast as, same backswing, and I move my left hip as fast as I can on the... So all my tension's on my left hip. See that ball went a little right. The other ones went a tiny bit left. Now I put all my attention on my left shoulder, and fire that, so that's going to start the downswing for me. Turn and went a little straighter. Where else? So I then split the difference, being tall, I would um, fire my lats. Your lats are a very important part of your body. Now I can fire my lats, see what happens. Goes right again. So what happens is, if you get a pattern, if you do that a few times and notice, well, when I think of a certain part of my body, I get a different golf shot. If, it, if you get a pattern, a nice pattern to it, that's really quite useful to know. Because when you, when you want to hit a certain kind of shot, you know where to put your attention in your body. That's, that's one way of making the golf ball do different things without too much technical change, right? Another one, here's a fun one. This is a six iron. So when I hit it, I'll hit a normal six iron I work from normal position. All right, there. Now, I won't move the ball, same position. But when I get to impact, I'm gonna turn this into a seven iron. So I've got to imagine before I get there, well, that means I've got to come into here. I'm gonna try and hit this and put loft on it. So it's already waking up my body of how I've got to be at impact. So I'm thinking, wow, how do I turn this into a seven iron? You see, I had to talk my body differently to get the ball higher. Now I'll do the opposite, same ball position. I'll, hit a, I'll turn that six iron into a five iron, so my body's got to be in this position. So the brain tells the body, right, that's where I want to be. Now from six to five. So same club, just by making a decision before I hit it is quite a fun way. So rather than, so it's just another idea. When you've got, when you hit an eight, I've been doing this on the golf course, I quite like it because when I, if I've got an eight iron in my hand and I can't quite get it there, or I think I'm gonna come up short, I go, I pretend I turn it into a seven iron just by twisting my body and then it's kind of working. The ball's going a little different distances. So I want you to try that. That's quite a fun way to make the golf ball do different things, yeah? Another one can be really as simple as high, how low can I hit a six iron from a normal position? All right. See, that's trying to go to the right. Not a lot, but it's trying. <laughs> now I hit one as, as high as I possibly can. Same club, six iron, really release as fast as I can. And it's annoying when you hit it straight all the time, isn't it? I'm trying to demonstrate. For... <laughs> I 
What's meant to happen is when you try and hit it high, you are releasing the club as much as possible. So it should kind of draw. It's trying, isn't it? Gee, you got me on a straight day. And then you'd hit it super low. Same club, really hit it as low as possible. And <laughs> it's trying to go right. So I was, I, was, I was hitting balls the other day, doing this with a, with a lofted metal, you know, five wood. And I hit a dozen as far high as I could and they all went high left and I hit the low, the low ones, they all went to the right. And I thought, well, that's a cool way to play the golf course. If I know I can miss the fairway left, it's a good spot, stand up and hit it as high as I like. Or if the hole went round the corner to the right, I just stood up and hit it as low as I could and the thing went peeling off to the right. Another way of making the ball manoeuvre, and I haven't thought of anything technical at all. I've just sent the message to my mind, obviously my mind to my body, like, well, I've got to be here at impact, so I'd like you to experiment with that. Obviously, you've got track men as well, and you've got coaches to keep you on, on track, make sure it's your swings, but again, you can teach yourself. If you start with a good understanding of your basics, your alignment and club face, you'll start to learn that how you get the club face back to the ball. You can shape the ball without doing an awful lot. You don't have to do too much manipulating, yeah? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, good. Trying to knock the ball down, as you, as you guys know, if you hit down on it hard, you get more backspin and you send it higher. So we've got to find a way of swinging, collecting the ball without hitting down on it. And I went out, I went at Muirfield in 92. I went out on the Sunday, it was blowing something serious, 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, really howling. And I just played a couple of holes to get the feel of that wind. And we developed a shot, a little follow through. And I call it the bunt, where my arms were so soft I mean, the image was as if like I was old school, I was like playing with a tweed jacket on. So I can't get my hand, arms out here. I'm like, I'm cramped in, like I'm super connected. I'm in a jacket. So my, almost the feeling was I put my right thumb into my right ear and I followed through and I did the same, put my right thumb in my left ear. And you used to get nice and soft, soft arms, you see. And you start to get a really nice ball flight with no hitting down on it. So look, like soft, soft, soft. Yeah, look at that, see? So that is going that away, isn't it? That's not climbing. And even in the gale, so the other important part of that is I'm swinging smoothly, especially when it's really windy, you want to be under control and I could keep the, so as simple as that. You, you, we hear, you hear us talk about it on TV, soft arms. There you go, look at that. So you can, Again, that's fun, isn't it? Great way to practice. I haven't changed much in my swing. I've just softened my arms. I collect the ball, no real divot. And you still got to learn to work it. So I can still work a fade. I keep the face rotating open a little bit. Or if I want to draw, just fractionally, feel like you're fractionally in to out, soft arms, both, and there's your little low draw. So, so see how that was flying? Great, that, that's really penetrant. That will not climb. And that's, then I fortunately, I used it that week. I had a great shot at 15, a little knock down five iron and ended up en route to winning. So that's a really useful little, so you can play the whole game. I used to do that intentionally, like the week before a tournament, if I was playing on the links, and I know it's gonna be windy, even if we were in land, I forced myself, if, I, if it was a six iron shot, I took a five iron, went down on the grip, found a really nice tempo, and just hit little soft shots. So imagine if, if this was like a seven iron shot, I'd take the six and really hit it as smooth as I could. It's a full swing, but see, I'm not trying. I'm not even trying to hit anything low and they're all coming out. So, any more questions? Yeah. What's that? 
Fade or draw? Yeah, I like fade in the ball. I think you, um, I think it's, it's the confidence factor of how your arms obviously rotate through impact. If you're, there's two different types of, imp, two different types of right wrist. So if you make the same backswing and hang on to this angle to here, see where the club face is coming in a little bit open, isn't it? So I used to imagine I was getting the heel of the club to the golf ball. So I'd hang on to that angle and get the heel of the club to the ball first and, and like so. So it's always, always going to go to the right. And then I had an even more of a guarantee. So that one, hopefully when I did that really well, that was like my little hold off shot. Hold off the wrist, hold the angle of the club face, same swing, hold the angle. And you see that's trying to go that way, just a yard or two. If I really wanted to guarantee it went to the right or anti-left, I had a chicken wing where I'd break the, the left arm. So the club face comes down to the ball and I break my wrist. And look at that club face. It literally does, it will not cross over. And this should just go straight, almost straight like a, like a block. There you go. So if you go water down the left and you're panicking a little bit <laughs> and you just don't want to come over the top of it, that's a great way to play. And again, in really rough conditions, you see, I could do that. Look, look what that club face is. You're finished here. So a very use. And then going the other way, it, I used to fully release the right wrist and let it go. So you see it, golfers like so have let it go. And obviously the other one is there hanging on to it. So there's a big difference, isn't there? So if I let this one go, I should hit a tiny little draw, like so, just let it release. The other thing about that is that one should go a couple of yards further, like two or three yards further than normal. So if I'm in between yardage and I want to step on it, I would go to that release. Let's try another one, just give it a full, full right hand, there you go. So that's shifting, isn't it? That you can tell that's gone a little further. And then if I wanted to really hook one, I needed to manipulate it. So you would rotate, rotate was called. So move the ball back right in front of the middle of the stance, rotate the forearm over, rotate, rotate, and there was my lower power draw. So again, when you're playing maybe into a really hard left to right wind, out of bounds down the right. What do you do? By moving the ball back, you get the ball on a different arc. And I could hit that kind of, that kind of hook, yeah? But I had more confidence in this way. So the question was, which one did I favor? I favored the fade because I felt with my strength, if under pressure, I could hang on to that face, deliver the, the club with the heel first and hang on to it like there. So I knew if it's going anywhere, it's going right and never left. Ah, oh, any questions? Yeah. 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 Absolutely, yeah. So, first part, when I was at your age, um, young lad, I practiced every morning. I'd start like 8.15 in the morning. I'd hit balls all the way to 12 o'clock. I'd have my lunch, a couple of sandwiches, and I would play every afternoon. And I'd play minimum 27 holes. 